<clears throat> I don't think most of you really believe that I found that math out there in the real world. So what I'm going to do is pretty much another adventure. I'm going to find some more math. This time stuff outside of the school so you don't think it was pre-staged or anything like that. So we're going to go on a little adventure here. Hey Pat, you want to go on a math adventure? Maybe later. Uh, alright. Hey Jay. What are you doing? Homework. Oh. I guess you don't want to go looking for math, huh? No. Is this a vlog? A what? A blog? Is this, uh, is this one of those videos? Yeah, like for school? This is for school? Yeah. Alright. What are we going to need here? Uh, we're going to need my bike. Definitely gonna need my bike. Definitely gonna need my bike. A little bit hard getting kind of backing it out and holding the tripod. Tripod. Ooh, tripod. That's math. All right. Here we go. Here goes our neighbor. He uh, plays the music real loud when he drives. Okay. So no, let's go hop on here. This is going to be tougher than I thought. I think I didn't take the dog. Ah, here, I got somebody. Hey, Paul. Yeah, Want to be in an educational video? I just leave it in about five minutes. Uh, you know what? I'm just looking for some math. Do you have any math by any chance? Any what? Any, any math. Um, I, um, let's see, math-wise. Um, what kind of math are you looking for? Like division? Oh, I got tons of division. 18 divided by 4. I've oh, got... cool. Do you have anything like on paper? Uh, yeah, I can do something. Um, He's going to find something good for us. Okay. Let, let's see. I don't know. Uh, hang on. Let me close this door here. All right. Oh, the refrigerator. Uh -huh. you got your waiters out there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any math in those? Um, Boy, I tell you what. There's, I can give you a size. I mean... All right. Uh, well, well, I guess not, though. Oh, oh hey, look, there's, there's math oh, right there. Look at this. Look at that. Nice All notes. right. All right, great. Okay. All right, so where do you want me to go here? Just, uh, you know, let's have the first paper on top there. Okay, so just... Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just unclip it there. All right. Lots of clips here, though. Yeah, well, you oh, know, it's... it's when it over like this? Or? Yeah, just give me the... Let's give the kids the first problem there. All right. Is Abby inside in those guys? She is, she's in the shower. <laughs> so just flip this over? Yeah, just let's get this out of there and that first here. problem. Right. Just flip the whole thing over. Okay. Right. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Ah, uh, now there's a problem for yeah. us. Yeah, well, I'll tell you right now, that's going to be a little rough on me. Uh, I'll so tell you, I'll take care of that. We'll go, we'll let the kids do it. Okay. We'll all let right. the kids do it. I, all right, so uh, let's make sure. Wow, thanks for this problem, Mr. Johnson. I'm gonna put it down, we're gonna do, I'm gonna just set it down in your driveway, and uh, I'm gonna have the kids solve it, then I'm gonna show them how to solve it, okay? Thanks, Mr. Johnson, it's a great problem. Okay, here we go. Here we go, kids, solve this problem. We have 19 and 8 tenths divided by 3 tenths. So go ahead and solve that problem. I'll pause the video. All right, here we go. Um, let's go over the problem together that Mr. Johnson gave us to do. Now, the first thing that you want to make sure is that you look to see what it is you're working with. And we can see that we have 19 and 8 tenths divided by 3 tenths. Okay? So we're going to set up our problem like a traditional division problem. Our dividend is 19 and 8 tenths, 
and we're going to divide by 3 tenths. Okay, so now we have our problem set up. Now the first thing that you want to do is you want to bring your decimal point over in your divisor and make it a whole number. That means that you're going to have to bring it over in your dividend, which is essentially multiplying by 10. Okay, so now we're ready to divide like we normally would, but first we want to put our decimal point up where it belongs in the quotient. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does 3 go into 1? Can't do it. How many times does 3 go into 19? Well, it goes into 19 a total of 6 times. Get out of there, fly. And then we have 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, and we have 19 take away 18, we end up with 1. Bring down our 8, and now we have 3 into 18. We'll go 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. And in this case, we have a terminating decimal. So our answer to Mr. Johnson's problem is 66. And if you wanted to leave... Okay, we're going to get back on the bike. And we are going to keep going. Let's see if we can't find any more. Ugh. Oh, there's somebody back there. Hey, hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. Just, this is going to be just the ticket. Hey, wow, look at that, the door just opened too. I, uh, hey, Mr. Hutch! You wanna be an educational video? Yeah. Look, here's Mr. Hutch's dog. Hey, we're looking for math. In the, we're, I'm just out there looking for math, yeah. Do you have any like sitting around in the, hey, Mrs. Hutch, how are you? We're, we're making an educational well, video. I'll, I'll tell you what, this summer, I bought one of these cruddy pools, okay? <laughs> And I had to figure out how much space it was going to take up in the yard if I could fit it on the deck yeah. or if I could put it in the backyard. And so I had to deal with all this stuff with the volume and the aye, aye, aye. Uh, circumference of the pool and did it what, work? what the did diameter it, did it work? was. Well, I found out that the deck um, wasn't big enough because of everything. So we killed a lot of grass in the yard. <laughs> uh, ah, you're a homeowner. But, but well, this, this was my math thing over the summer. Hey, do you have any like sitting around on a shelf you could just kind of like find for us? Hey, look at you. Yeah. Uh oh, he's getting away from you. Hey, come here. So yeah, I mean, if you could just pull something off the shelf, the kids would love that. Pull something off the shelf. Yeah. Like we're talking about. Oh yeah, all anything. This, yeah, like right there, that one in your hand would be perfect. This here, this yeah. cake. Here. Well, well, the cake would be good if you're gonna bake it. Or but the like, problem, yeah. Hey, that's they, that's. I mean, we keep this right here. If do, this works. do you? Yeah. Yeah, that would that'd be perfect. Would this be good? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna take it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the kids complete it. Yeah, that would be great. All right. I hey, thanks. That. Hey, I yeah, like your sure. I like your tiara. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's yeah. really that's cool. Nice. I like that. Yeah. That's nice. Hey. All right, hey, thanks. You got, you got a nice dog. All right, well, okay, we're gonna get going. I'll have the kids do this problem. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate ya. it. Daddy. Wow. Wow, Mr. Hutch, this is this is a great problem. Thank you. We really appreciate you giving this problem. So here we go, kids. Here's our problem that Mr. Hutchison has given us. It is 64 divided by 8 tenths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and we're going to put it on Mr. Hutch's, uh, we'll put it on his driveway and you guys, or something, it looks like his lawnmower, we'll put it there and you can solve the problem. Alright, here we go. And there's Mr. Hutch's problem right there. Okay, let's see if you can solve Mr. Hutchison's problem. And it is 
64. Okay. So here's Mr. Hutchison's problem. It is 64 divided by 8 tenths. So go ahead, I'll pause the video and you guys go ahead and solve that problem. Well, let's see how we did, kids. Okay, let's see how we did with Mr. Hutchison's problem. Well, we're going to set it up like a regular division problem. And we have 64, which is our dividend. And we're dividing it by 8 tenths. So we have 64 divided by 8 tenths. Now, again, the first thing that we have to do, the first thing that we have to do is we have to bring over our decimal point. Now, there is no decimal point in 64, so we're going to add one. And we need to bring it over one place, so we're going to annex a zero to bring it over the one place value. And now we have our decimal point ready to be placed into our quotient. So take it right on up. Now you're ready to just divide. And now it is 8 into 6, can't do it. 8 into 64, we'll go a total of 8 times. 8 times 8 is 64, which is kind of neat because now we end up with a zero. And the zero we annexed comes down here. Eight can't go into zero, so we say it goes in zero times. Zero times eight is zero. Subtract, and you have a remainder of nothing, and we have ourselves a terminating decimal, which is really good. So the answer to this problem, the answer to Mr. Hutch's problem is 80. Very probably gonna crash. All right, Mr. Hutch, we'll see you. Thanks again for the math. All right. Well, you know what? I, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm thinking about coming to McCain to visit you guys. See ya. All right, let's see, where else can we go? All right, these guys will have some math for us. These are, these are good people. I like the burgers a lot, good friends of ours. Hey guys. What do you want, Mr. Triola? It's Sunday morning. Math? Yeah, I'm just looking for math for the kids. Do you have anything like that? Fine, here. Thanks! But... Well, she wasn't very happy about that. Oh, well, that's Sunday morning. Where are we from? I think. Wait, okay. Hey, this is a great... I don't think Kaylee Berger was too happy about giving me a division problem, but that's all right. It's, it's, uh, that's okay. Um, look at Kaylee's problem. Kaylee has given us this problem. We have 52 and 6 tenths divided by 8 tenths. So I'm going to set this down. I'm going to set this down and you guys go ahead and give this problem a solve. All right? All right, let's see. Okay, let's solve Kaylee Berger's problem. We're gonna set up as a regular division problem, and we're going to say 52 and 6 tenths divided by 8 hundredths, okay? So here's how you solve, oop, look at that, the wind's blowing my problem. So here's how we solve this problem. First of all, we have to move our decimal point over two places in the divisor. When we do that, that means we're gonna have to move it two places in the dividend. Now you can see we have one place, so we have to move it two places, so we're gonna have to annex a zero in order to get our decimal point moved. So now we can move it over the one, two places. Now we know where it belongs in our quotient. So we can take it on up and put it in our quotient. 
okay? Now we're ready to solve this problem. Ask yourself, how many times does 8 go into 5? Can't do it. How many times does 8 go into 52? Well, 8 goes into 52 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract, and you have a partial remainder of 4. Bring down your 6, and ask yourself, how many times does 8 go into 46? 8 will go into 46 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract. 6 take away 0 is 6. 4 take away 4 is 0. Bring down the 0 we annexed. And now we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 60? goes in a total of 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract and you end up with a partial remainder of 4. And now in this case you can see we have to get rid of this partial remainder so we're going to annex another 0 and bring it on down and now we have 8 into 40. Well this is a comfort number. 8 will go into 40 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract, and we have a terminating decimal. So the answer is going to be 657 and 5 tenths. All right, that was a great problem. Hey, that was awesome. Well, is she, all right, most people, okay, it's Sunday, I gotta give it. Okay, let's get going. Let's go find some more here. This might be, ah, there, there he is. I'll ask this guy. Yeah, this guy will know. He's he's an engineer, so he's he's got to have math sitting around. Hey! Mr. Girola, how you doing? How you doing, Mr. Kolka? I'm good. How you doing today? Good. We're out looking for math. Do you have, uh, you have any sitting around the house? I don't have any math, but boy, Jenna's in the garage. Let me see what she's got. All right, let's go see. Jenna's in the garage. Hey, Jenna! Jenna! Hey, Jenna! You get... I thought you'd be more excited. You got any math or something? Your dad says you guys have some sitting around in the garage. Yeah. Oh, this is good. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it's a good problem. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. Thanks, Jenna. Hey, thanks, Mr. Kolka. Hey, we appreciate you're, it. You're welcome, Mr. Troll. You, you guys have, have a good day. All right, bye bye. <laughs> wow, look at look at this look at this great problem that Jenna gave us. Jenna Kolka, Ms. Scott, Mr. Kolka, and Jenna found for us. Okay, this is an awesome problem. We have six and five hundred and eighty-eight thousands divided by fifty-four hundredths. Wow, this is a great problem. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down, pause the video, and you guys solve it. All right, let's see how we did on Jenna's math problem. Okay, set it up like a traditional division problem. And we have 6 and 588 thousands divided by... 54 hundredths. Now this is a, a neat problem because we have to move our decimal point two places over in the divisor and so we have to move it two places over in the dividend. Now we take it and we put it up where it belongs in the quotient. Now it's just a regular division problem and we ask ourselves how many times will 54 go into 65? It will go a total of one time. One times 54 is 54. Subtract, and you have 5 take away 4 is 1. 6 take away 5 is 1. 11 is less than 54. Bring down the 8, and we have 54 into 118. 54 will go into 118 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 5 is 10. We subtract. 8 take away 8 is 0. 1 take away 0 is 1. 
and we're ready to bring down our 8. 54, look at that, 54 times 2 is 108. 108 is right here, so we know that 54 will go into 108 twice. 2 times 54, of course, is 108. Subtract, end up with 0. And so our answer to Jenna's problem is 12 and 2 tens. Very cool. Wow. That's pretty neat. We ended up getting a whole bunch of math just by going around a simple neighborhood. People have math laying all over the place. All right? And so that's it, kids. Here we go. Well, that was really nice of me. I'll tell you, it's amazing how much math you can really find in the real world when you're looking for it. Good enough.